So to finish off this video, let's do an example. So let's say a company sells 1,000 units of product at $200 each. The direct material and direct labor costs are $30 and $50 respectively. Total manufacturing overhead is $40,000, where the variable portion is $15 per unit. Total selling costs are $20,000, where $15,000 is the fixed portion. Create a contribution margin income statement. So contribution margin income statement, we start with revenue. And what is the revenue? Well, we're selling 1,000 units at 200 each, so that would give us 200,000. And then we're going to subtract the total variable costs. And let's do some work on the side here. Let's find what the variable cost per unit is going to be. That's usually the first step that you want to do when solving for these variable costs. Because if you can get the variable cost per unit, then you just multiply it by 1,000 units, and that would give you your total variable cost. So the variable cost per unit, well, we know direct material, direct labor, that's part of that. So that's going to be 30 plus 50. Notice that 30 and 50, because those numbers are so low, we can assume that it's per unit, right? Didn't really say I should have maybe wrote that it's per unit, but they're low enough that we can already tell that it's per unit. So direct material, direct labor, um, and then what else goes under variable costs? Variable manufacturing overhead, and then variable period expenses. So notice that we're given the total manufacturing overhead. So manufacturing overhead is uh, 40,000 in total. And remember, manufacturing overhead, we split it up into variable, manufacturing overhead, and fixed manufacturing overhead. So the variable portion, we're told it's $15 per unit. And if we're selling 1,000 units, then in total, the variable portion is going to be 15,000. Right? Or 15 per unit. So variable cost per unit, this 15 per unit would go under that as well. And the reason why you want to get the total is because now you could get the fixed manufacturing overhead. So 40,000 minus 15,000, it means the fixed portion of the manufacturing overhead has to be 25,000. And that's going to be later on in the income statement. And then the, um, what else are we told? We're told the total selling costs are 20,000. So notice that's a period cost. So we got selling is total 20,000. And remember period costs, they're split up into a variable portion and a fixed portion. So in this case, we're told the fixed portion of the selling cost is 15,000. Like that. So it means the variable portion in total of the selling cost is gonna be what? 5,000. And if we wanna get it on a per unit basis, we would take that 5,000 and divide it by the output. 1,000. So 5,000 divided by 1,000 gives us $5 per unit. And so now that would go here. That would be part of the variable cost per unit, the total variable cost per unit. Right? So sometimes these things, they're not going to be given to you. Sometimes you may have to figure them out. With the variable manufacturing overhead, we were given $15 per unit, but notice with the variable selling costs, we first have to figure out the total variable selling cost by taking the total selling cost, subtracting the total fixed portion, the total fixed selling cost. And then that gave us the total variable selling cost. We had to divide that by the output to get the variable cost per unit. And then that goes there. Right? So just be careful. A lot of times you have to figure stuff out. Right? So I think it is helpful to make these kind of diagrams, especially for manufacturing overhead and any kind of period cost that you get. Because direct material, direct labor, we know that that directly goes into the variable cost per unit, but manufacturing overhead, 
certain period costs, you got to split those up into a variable portion and a fixed portion. So here, if we add all of these, we would get $100. And so that's the variable cost per unit. And since we are selling 1,000 units, that means our variable cost in total is going to be 100,000. And so revenue minus uh, variable cost gives us our contribution margin. And so 200 minus 100, that just gives us 100. So that's our contribution margin right there. And then from the contribution margin, we subtract our fixed costs. And notice that we have our fixed costs. Remember fixed costs, they're fixed manufacturing overhead plus fixed period costs. In this case, fixed selling costs. So uh, we had the 25,000, which we figured out, and then the 15,000, which we were given. So if you add those, you would end up getting 40,000. for the fixed costs. And so the profit or the income ends up being 60,000. And that there is your contribution income statement. So sometimes it could start getting a little bit tricky where you have to start manually figuring stuff out. Now this contribution uh, income statement, you can also show stuff on a per unit basis. More specifically, the uh, revenue, which would be um, on a per unit basis is 200 per unit. The variable cost per unit was 100, right? We figured that out on the side. And so the contribution margin or the unit contribution margin is $100, right? 200 minus 100. And you could also figure out percentages if you want. So if the sales are 100%, Notice that the variable cost or the variable cost ratio is 50% or 0.5. Contribution margin ratio is 50% as well. You could take the 100 divided by 200 or you could take the 100,000 divided by the 200,000. Either or, you're going to get that contribution margin ratio right there. Right. So once you have the income statement, you could get a bunch of other characteristics if they ask for it. If they ask for the con uh, the unit contribution margin or the contribution margin ratio, for example. 